Hi, I'm Phil Pringle, founder of the C3 Movement of Churches. Welcome to C3 TV's Leadership with Phil Pringle, yours truly. It's here that we're going to unpackage leadership truths. And I'd love you to subscribe if you haven't already. And make sure you share this with all your friends, your associates, your family, and especially your team. You know, uh, the whole world of strategy becomes extremely important when you've got a vision and a set of goals that are going to reflect your priorities and they reflect your values. If you have no way, no roadway, no pathway to get to where you want to go, uh, nobody's going to find that they can come with you. And so a leader is a path maker. And sometimes that path making is on brand new territory where nobody has been before. That's the pioneer leader. And, and sometimes that can be frightening for the people following you because they've never heard of anybody doing it like this or going this particular way. And there are more rare moments in our history we have found ourselves doing things that sometimes others have not been doing, such as we had an arts college, and we still do have an arts Bible college, where we train uh, several disciplines in the arts. We train songwriters, musicians, uh, we train artists, uh, graphic artists, lighting experts, uh, people who want to do lighting in church life. Everything that we train in our School of Creative Arts is to enhance the worship experience and to help churches in their communications and videos and filming and educational uh, machinery as well so that uh, we can enhance the church with the arts. So that it isn't just a matter of functionality, it's a matter of beauty. It's a matter of making the work of God glorious and doing it excellently. And so I've had a burden all the time to have a renaissance of the arts in the church. Once upon a time, we had the most beautiful cathedrals and the most wonderful art and music. And then for some reason, we retreated from all these areas feeling that it was more pious in some way to not be as engaged in the world of art. But I do not believe that that is the case. I think God wants us most definitely to have a strategy for bringing uh, the soul of the church, making it come alive, the rhythms and the art and the, the culture of the church should be beautiful. And beauty, beauty is part of what God is all about. And I believe that us as believers should be fully engaged in those areas. So having a creative art school became part of a strategy to achieve that cultural vision that we had. Coming into another area of our organization is that we are aiming to have a thousand churches. Now that wasn't always the case. Right at the beginning of our church, my goal was to have a church of 500 people. That was way back in 1980. I thought if I could do that, that would make me pretty happy. Well, that happened within a couple of years. So I thought, well, man, maybe we should do some revision of our, of our goals and our vision. And I felt the Lord speak to me at that time and, and tell me to plant 10 churches in 10 major cities of the world. I thought, wow, that's going to be a lifetime's goal. Uh, and at that point of time, we started a part-time college so that we would be training our connect group leaders and we started a full-time college to train ministers for leadership. And then, as I said, we started a creative arts college to create worship leaders and singers for the worship experience in churches that we were starting. And, uh, and as we started this part-time college, we found that became a great pathway and strategy for developing leaders. We now have an online college where we have trained so far in the last couple uh, few years uh, around 9,000 leaders through that college. And that becomes a strategy that many of our churches and many other churches actually outside of our movement are using that for their training purposes in their own congregation. And out of that are graduating leaders into positions uh, throughout their congregations. So. These become, training is one of the main strategies by which we will achieve uh, our goals and our vision.
and especially when we have a goal of 1,000 churches and eventually I'm believing that we'll have 1 million worshipers in attendance in our congregations around the world on a weekend. So the strategy for uh, achieving a goal has to be clear in, in front of people's thinking. And I break that down into people's lives uh, in terms of how they're going to achieve their goals. Uh, recently, one of my board members uh, came to me and he said to me, uh, can you remember how that 20 years ago, uh, or it was something like that 20 odd years ago, I said to you, uh, I'd love to give a million dollars to the church to help out. But there was no way I could, I could have done that. However, he said, recently I asked for all my receipt records from what I'd given in the building fund, uh, our vision builders fund, over the last X number of years. And he said, you know what? I've given way more than a million dollars. It was something like $1.5 million over that period of time. What he had wanted to do in his mind as a one-off moment uh, had been accomplished steadily as he just followed a strategy over a period of years. And that is, once you tell people, look, if you just do this, and then this, and then this, and you create a pathway for them, if they are patient and committed, eventually they will accomplish what they set their mind to. Nothing is accomplished overnight. No vision is achieved in a, in a snap of the fingers. Uh, we may want it to happen like that, but it never does. It takes patient application to a process. And that process is the repeated actions every day of doing something. I remember another young woman in our church, when she made her commitment, she thought, oh, I can only make such a small commitment. It's like $5 a week or, or whatever. She felt like it added up to nothing. But she did the same thing. She asked for the receipts of her giving after a period of X number of years. And she, uh, she knew us quite personally. She had helped us in our family quite a lot. She was so excited. She came around and saw us and she said, you know what? I, I never believed that I could ever give this amount to the church. She had given $75,000 over this long period of time just through diligently completing her commitment every year to helping us build the church. And it is when thousands of people see a pathway for their own life to accomplish that, they will be get blessed. There's no doubt about it. When people start giving to a particular thing, they start reaping a harvest in that part of their own world. And we've seen it many hundreds of times that when you build God's house, He builds yours. So the great lesson in here is that every leader must be a strategist. A smart leader just doesn't see the future. They know how they're going to get there. They can see step by step by step, this is how we'll get there. Faith comes from seeing how the vision can happen. If, if you cannot, if you can project a vision, but you can't show people how they're going to get there, not many people will believe you. Uh, people, are not, they don't want to have just blind faith saying, oh yeah, somehow we're going to achieve this huge goal. If you say, look, if we do this this year, and then that, and then that, and if we can accomplish this year after year, and you break it down to bite sizes, you're going to find that that's the, that's the image that we all know about. How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? And, and I, I've been shocked at what we have been able to achieve just through concentrating on taking that next bite, just not on trying to swallow the whole elephant at once, but just one bit at a time, we move mountains, we build pathways, we lift up valleys, and we make bridges, and we create a, a whole route towards achieving that goal, step by step. So right strategy and right destination are the two key elements of the pathway. If, if you see where you're going and you believe you'll get there, and you have a, a, an honest audit an appreciation of where you are right now, you will see the pathway between you and that destination. And all it is, is setting the time that you think it will 
take to get there. And then you can systematically create a process to get there. Clear destination helps determine a clear path. And so once we break it down, whether it's a 10 year goal or a 20 year goal, we're able to break it back down into how much this year we're going to achieve. And if we can break it down to a year, we can break it down to a monthly goal, a weekly goal, and then a daily goal. So that for me, if I, I write a lot of books and every year I try and write one new book in, in my spare time. So that means uh, I need to have achieved a certain number of chapters by a certain number of times. And, uh, and so that keeps me motivated. So when I get on an airplane, instead of just sitting down, thinking about watching a movie and having the meal or whatever, I will start typing out my quota of chapters that I need to get done. If I'm sitting in a car and there's a lot of traffic around, I can pull out my computer and get writing and complete those goals that I have set myself. And so I've got a pathway to accomplish the goal. And if I just do that chapter, that chapter, before I know it, I've finished the book. And that's a great feeling to actually finish what you started because you put yourself on a goal system, a systematic way of achieving it, and you applied discipline to making it happen. So that clear expectation provides accountability to yourself, especially if you've got others involved as well, because they're relying on you to deliver the pages to them, etc. Clear goals and clear, simple strategies release far higher levels of energy and commitment than do any goals that are vague and confused. If you're just saying, oh, you know, we'll, we'll somehow write a couple books over a few years and uh, nobody's going to move. No, we're going to start several congregations around the city. Nobody's going to move. We say we're going to start one new congregation every year in this city. And this is how we're going to do it. We're going to train the people here. We're going to disciple them here. We're going to have interest nights there. And then we're going to release it on this particular day. Time after time, your strategy will take you into the fulfillment of your vision. So number one, on the clarity of vision, if the pathway and strategy are unclear, remember, nobody moves. So once you've broken down the strategy and it's precise, clear and definite, you're going to have momentum and motivation in your team. Let me ask you this. Is your vision obscure? Is it ambiguous? Is it loose and, and you, you're not prepared to commit to particular and clear goals? Then not, nothing much is going to happen, but commit to a clear goal. Say, so let's do this by then. For people trying to lose weight, it's easy. Just say, we're going to lose this much by then. People who are trying to get fit, they're going to get a resting heart rate of this by then. People who are going to achieve a financial particular deadline. We're going to save this much by then. And you have rules that govern all these areas. So we don't save what's left over after we've spent. We spend what's left over after we save and after we've given and after we've put the priorities on our finances, etc. So once we have these strategies in place, and there are a hundred different strategies for achieving a hundred different goals, like the buying of a house, the paying of a mortgage, the budget for your food each week, the budget for your uh, um, living expenses. Having all these areas in, engaged in, in systems is going to help you. Don't despise systems. Don't think it's going to kill your adventurous, creative life or whatever. These will actually release you in those areas rather than you being constantly hamstrung by not having clear systems in your world. Number two, define roles. Clear expectation can only be achieved by clear job descriptions and clear goals for those people. Don't give people jobs that are beyond their experience or their skills. Set them up for success so they go from one level of success to another. Uh, if people don't understand the role and the purpose you're, you're wanting them to achieve and to be involved in, how are they going to ever accomplish that task? Understanding and accepting clear expectations provides easy accountability. You're able to say, how are we going with that? Do we need to revisit it? Do we need to reforecast? And so as you help them and train them, and people can only be trained in a context of an expectation or a job. So it takes faith to give a person a job and you are believing in them when you, and they will rise to that once, once you've given them that task.
but then they're going to need feedback. And that's where coaching comes in and helping them understand the system and the strategy by which you're going to achieve the goal. Number three, have a system. Systems begin with self-management in the leader. If I've got systems and self-management, I'm going to be able to bring that into my organization as well. Habits guarantee that you'll get a job done. The predictability of habits creates a platform for trust by others in yourself. People are trustworthy because they're predictable. I know that I can rely on that person to be at work early, every day. He's not just on time, he's early, so he's reliable. The person who's perpetually late and making excuses, that's not trustworthy, that's not reliable. So that's a basic character flaw that needs fixing, but that's, those sorts of flaws can bleed out into other areas of our lives that make us unpredictable and unreliable. However, on the positive, good habits and things like punctuality, things like uh, they finish jobs well, et cetera, et cetera, those qualities bleed out into other areas of their character and makes them a completely trustworthy and reliable person. So that's the strategy lesson. And as we create strategy, people follow systems and that makes their character grow. And you develop a great team that is both strong, reliable, trustworthy, immovable, and accomplishing amazing things every day of your organization's life. If you don't believe you're going to achieve the vision, you won't see the pathway or the strategy to the future. But when you do believe it and you can see that vision, you'll see the pathway and you'll see the strategy to your future. Thank you.